Hello and welcome to Tavern Chat with the uh, the voice like nails on the chalkboard. Thus are the days of the week. So I thought today, again, trying to get onto some more pleasant topics. H how do we get more younger gamers into the OSR now? There's an article up on ICD2, and I found the articles I was looking for the last quarter sales reports. It really aren't sales reports. It's a ranking, and the difference between first and second place can be, you know, yay big or yay. Eh, we're losing my screen, but whatever. Yay big. We don't, you don't know from that. you got to infer it from other data sources. So I'm waiting for the latest uh, quarter to come, the first quarter of 2020. And I'll match it up to the uh, the Roll20, the uh, Fantasy Grounds, and, and we'll see what we can infer from the data we have. But in the meantime, there is some interesting data. And um, according to Wizards of the Coast, their survey from back in, I believe, 2020, um, or at least their infographic was from 2020. The survey could have been from 2019. 40% of D&D players are 25 and younger. Now, on one level, you know, I guess I'm kind of surprised because I'm in the OSR, and for the most part, our gaming circles tend to be older. But, of course, I came into gaming young. I was probably 13 when I started rolling dice and playing AD&D and thinking that, Oh, uh, basic D and D was for babies because it said basic on it. Let's, come on, I was thirteen. I was advanced, but um, we had elitism even back then between the games that we played, and to, to a large extent, that elitism has continued. But something, something that is overlooked by far, and I think the OSR does itself an injustice for overlooking this, is that, yes, the OSR, publishers especially, use money raised by selling 5e products to keep their OSR lines alive. I mean, are they profitable? Sure, but not profitable enough to keep a company going. That's why you publish for 5e. All right? Again, as I said elsewhere, it's the rising tide that lifts all ships. Right now, in the OSR... There's a bit of a storm. There's going to be a bit of a fallout from this. And most likely, there's going to be a retrenching of business across the board. Um, and in the community the size of the OSR, you lose, I don't know, 10% of that, that business. It's noticeable. So what are we overlooking? And again, I'm not, I am a small time self-publisher. That is not what I'm not talking about what I would need to do as a publisher. I'm just saying, in general, what do we need to do as a community? And the one thing we need to do, and I think this is obvious to a lot of us, but maybe we don't do it, is introduce the next generation in our family to gaming. Okay? Or two generations. And, 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 but in my case, my niece is going to be, uh, she's 10 and a half. She'll be 11 in December. She is excited about Dungeons and Dragons, but doesn't play it, but she, the concept excites her. And I really should be taking time out of my summer to run games for her, Rach, maybe her mother. And I think she's old enough to certainly grasp a lot of the concepts. And it would be good. Because what are you trying to do? You're trying to introduce that next generation of gamer to gaming in general. And I'll be honest with you, something like Swords and Wizards Light is great for bringing in new gamers of all ages, whether they move on to Swords and Wizardry, another OSR game, 5e, Call of Cthulhu, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is not a zero-sum business, and that's what some people think. I lose a sale because somebody else got one. Not necessarily. you got to be in this for the long haul. If your business is built on, I need to make money right away, 
you're going to make decisions that are going to make sure that you, A, don't make money right away, and B, generally don't make money. All right? You're going to have to understand that this is the tortoise will generally win this race. You get your, your ducks lined up, you get your products prepared, and then you announce it. And I'll tell you the truth, even small things, a Torchlight Issue 1, a Torchlight Issue 0 came out last July. Torchlight Issue 1, I have to uh, move on to uh, Jeff, my layout guy, because I got it back from our editor, and now it's going to be ready to get the final layout, and then the, the copy gets uploaded, and it might be big enough to be print on demand, and how long did this take? I told you. Last issue was last July. The 32-page fucking zine, scene. I want to say zine. Forgive me. I, I know it's a mortal sin. This is part of that process. So to announce stuff that, oh, it's going to be out tomorrow, when you have nothing written is foolhardy. It's not even uh, penny-wise, pound-foolish. You're literally shooting yourself in the foot but building up expectations that you can't deliver on. And I am certainly have been guilty of that in the past. So it's live and let learn. But, again, why do we want to bring the youth in? Why do we want to bring in the people that are under 25? Well, they're looking for camaraderie, okay? This is a uh, – we're all looking for it. Gaming gives you um, either a network that your current group of friends bond into further, or maybe you, you get a new group of acquaintances that start to gel together and become friends. That's what gaming does. So they're looking for that, okay? And listen, when I was a kid, my mother was happy to have my friends over the house almost on a daily basis in the summertime because she knew what we were doing and would rather have us gaming than getting into other kinds of trouble. And um, over the last... Dun, 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 40 years, times have changed. It's a lot more trouble the youth can get into. It's inexpensive. Literally, with the OSR or with the 5th edition basic set, or is it the basic rules? Because the ba I guess the starter set, the essential set, but the basic rules are the free download. And it's all you need to play. And I'm not saying it's going to give you endless ability to play. Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, so what would you like? Four pages. Uh, email or message for our God Games. They'll send you physical copies for that game anywhere in the U.S. For free. If you want something that's physical, it's four pages. On the PDF, you can grab it for free. Why are these resources important? Because when you are younger, your resources, your ability to buy something, are less. So... Cost is a factor. OSR has a lot of stuff that's available for free. Rule sets available for free. Some people put out free adventures. You know, the one-page dungeons. These are things that, in your mind, as a member of the gaming community in general, not just the OSR, you should be steering our youth towards. Okay? Don't think of them as, as current paying customers. Okay? Because... I planted a garden this spring, right? How long does it take before you can start to harvest it? It is not immediate, okay? It, could I spend $10 on a fully grown tomato plant with tomatoes coming on it? Yes, I can. Or I could get a flat with uh, six tomato plants in it for five bucks. In the long run, what, what is going to yield me more? Well, the six for five dollars, right? I'm going to get six plants and, and fill half the cost of the fully grown plant, right? It's a long-term game. And it might even be, if you're a self-publisher, that you're not necessarily playing the recruitment game for yourself, but you're playing that recruitment game for publishers to come behind you. It's just the way of the world, because hopefully the publishers in front of you have done the same. Um, what else does this article talk about? Well, you think we cover the camaraderie, you cover the inexpensive, the inexpensive. How about social media? Effective use of social media can be huge for your company. 
And even companies like Frog Guy Games, which is not a huge company, I can talk about this because I'm involved peripherally with Frog Guy. Um, they've hired people to do social media, to do videos, to maintain their Discord channel. This is all important stuff when you reach a certain size. But even as a smaller publisher, you can do things like a YouTube channel. It doesn't have to be daily. Not everybody's a dumb fuck like me that's retired from regular employment and can be on here on a daily basis. You don't need to do that. But what you do need to do is make a connection with your customer base, with your potential customer base. Now, if you are someone, and this goes back to yesterday's uh, cast, if you're someone whose reaction to an angry individual on social media is to immediately lash back and one-up them. Oh, they called me obnoxious. Well, I'm going to tell them that fucked hard way to stick it up, shove it up. It. No. Then maybe social media isn't for you. May maybe you have to farm that out. Okay? Because social media can be a boom or is it boom? Yes, it can, it can be. It can be a boom, which is what we're watching right now. Uh, and he else. Or a bust, but it can be a boon. It can be a blessing. You have to treat it the right way. You got to treat it with, with kid gloves in a lot of ways. You know? um, the less you're concerned about making a profit, the more freewheeling you can be on your social media. And yes, YouTube is social media. Facebook is social media. Twitter is uh, that dive bar from Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, the first one that ever aired. Uh, a hive of scum and villainy, I believe is the quote from Obi-Wan. Well, that is Twitter, okay? And it doesn't mean that good things can't happen on Twitter. It just means that you can be surrounded by a ton of, ton of vile shit. So, again... Uh, when I graduated from elementary school, they made us uh, sing the song, uh, I Believe the Children of the Future, Treat Them Well and Let Them Lead the Way. Let's just show them all the beauty that the, possess the, inside. What beauty that we that they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride and make it easier uh, for their children's future. And remind them of how things used to be or some crap like that. Well, here's the thing. You should be showing them not the shitty side of social media and the hellish side of of gaming because there are some real fucktards in gaming okay you got to show them the, the, the right side you got to show you got to introduce them properly that's your responsibility it's my responsibility if you want this thing we call role playing games and gaming to thrive and survive I think it will always survive to some extent, but to really be something that you can walk into your neighborhood barn and say that you went to a gaming convention and they don't go, uh, you play poker? Um, you gotta, you got to work on it. i got to work on it. Folks, thank you for listening. Thank you to everybody that's recently subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, and you're a listener, especially a regular listener. I don't know why you haven't subscribed. Please do. Uh, it really helps. Comment on these videos. I do try to get to all your comments. Uh, if I don't respond, I generally try to like them or occasionally dislike them. But, hey, um, we do have a phone number. It's 347-509-5168. I do try to get to voicemails in a timely manner. I listen to them all. They don't all get up on sometimes... Sometimes events take a course of their own, which has been happening. Um, I am immunized against COVID-19. We are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I was talk about this UK Delta variant. Folks, I'm not telling you what to do. It's your life. It's your health. I will ask this. You claim that you have common sense when you play these role-playing games that we share in common, and that you would not throw a fireball into a 10-by-10 room because common sense would have told your character, 
even though you're state, you did it, um, that they would know the blowback would destroy the whole party. Well, I'm just saying, use your common sense when it comes to your health and the health of your family, your friends, your loved ones. Take common sense precautions. Talk to medical professionals. Get their advice. Don't listen to talking heads like, like me. All right? Be safe. Be well. God bless, especially folks like Ken Whitman and Justin Lanasa, who they, they there's an emptiness. I think they're trying to, to work out. So uh, you know, they fill it by 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 grifting off the community. So hopefully we can find a way to get get them out of that frame of mind. All right, folks. Knock on wood. Roll your dice well. I will talk with you all again. God willing, tomorrow's.